drive is winning good sell. Uh, the Salt Lake Tribune beat me to it. I guess they're, they've got somebody assigned to watch the church's website and keep clicking on refresh. <laughs> but apparently the brethren are out of their meeting early today. <laughs> and have announced uh, that they've decided on uh, turning the North Visitors Center into a Garden of Eden. Yeah, it's supposed to be a place of peace. And now that they've gotten rid of the homeless, it's going to be easier to do. If you remember Operation Rio Grande, that was the whole reason for it. To get rid of the panhandlers at Temple Square. Chase them throughout the valley. Get them away from Zion. Nelson called it Zion. He said that's the gathering place. That's why he's renovating the temple, making it bigger to have more people go through more sessions. And, and so in case you're wondering, as uh, we I've done the video, you know, I'm ahead of the Salt Lake Tribune on this one thing, what the church is up to in 2024. They say the gardens should be finished by 2023, but uh, the uh, Christus is going to be moved to a yet undetermined location to be unveiled when it's all finished. So yeah, you know damn well they're bringing it out at conference time with an unveiling of the whole temple redone and dedicatory, rededicatory prayer. And oh, here's Jesus. Oh, he's come back from the dead to save Judah. Why not us? <laughs> yeah. That's the whole Mormon theology for the latter days, is that Jesus Christ comes out of a pillar of light rather than on a flying horse of Christians and was originally scheduled to go to Adam on Diamond for the big priesthood meeting, go over to Jerusalem, kill all the Muslims attacking the Jews, and saving the remaining few Jews, and converting them to Mormonism, not too dissimilar from the Christian version, as both believe that he's the white Jesus, and uh, and so, yeah, they'll be converted away from their heathen Judaism into the true church. Uh, we're supposed to be Jewish. Book of Mormon, right there in the beginning of the book. And yet, nonetheless, uh, then he comes back to Independence, Missouri, where he sits on his throne... great temple to reign and rule on earth as all nations will come and bow before him and that's it and I guess as a resurrected being you don't need to go to the bathroom anymore although Elijah says that gods do need to use the bathroom <laughs> But you got to get the corrected translation version. <laughs> Unless you know Biblical Hebrew. <laughs> we'll battle with the priests of Baal. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've been warning you about. Is uh, they can't keep the charade of Latter-day Saints forever. We're, we're an apocalyptic church. <laughs> Hold on, Nelson. I'm taking a piss. <laughs> Wait for my unveiling. I'll be right there. <laughs> Would the Simpsons do that better? Family Guy. <laughs> Who would do that better? <laughs> and as such, 
how many more centuries do we have to wait for the second coming, as both Mormons and Christians believe it is, rather than the learning of the Jews? <laughs> Which is right now, 2024. And so as the church knows, it's 2024, thus the rededication of the Salt Lake Temple, which will be Zion, thus the Temple of Zion. And I've heard, not heard any word that they're planning on changing the keystone on the Salt Lake Temple to the right keystone. But yeah, they've got to come up with some way to let Mormons believe that Jesus has returned and has returned to his temple. And so I talked about the uh, likelihood of them pulling a scam of having a Holy of Holies in the Salt Lake Temple, which there already is one. It's uh, in the celestial room. It's the middle ceiling room off to the right after you pass through the veil and enter into the celestial room. It's the one that typically will have the plant, the potted plant, right in front of it to keep you from wandering in to look inside the Holy of Holies and touch the Ark of the Covenant. And we all know what happens if you don't have authority, right? <laughs> That's actually supposed to be the false prophet who's supposed to be struck as if by lightning. The vivid shaft of lightning. Something like that. 85-8. <clears throat> and so, uh, yeah, the, the best way I can, you know, the ancients, they created statues to represent the deity that obviously would, did not exist. <laughs> and so people would go and give their offerings. Oftentimes it were the priests that would do it on behalf of the people, depending on the time and the culture and, and uh, what forth and forever, I mean, your status in society. But uh, I, the story of Bell is perfect for this. Oh, what, what book is that, Travis? Is that in the Old Testament? Oh, it used to be until Spencer Gordon, or Spencer Gordon B. Hinckley, <laughs> Spencer W. Kimball took it out for our 79 edition of the Bible. Isn't that great? Instead of adding new scripture as prophesied, nope, he takes it away. Nope. So yeah, that was in one of the books of Daniel and they make the mistake of saying it's called Bell and the Dragon. No. They're two separate stories. There's Bell and then they go into another story like the Dragon. Same thing with Samson. I don't know why he's considered a judge. It's a story within the book of Judges. It's just a whole bunch of different stories of different people during the time period where the Jews have no clue what happened in Jerusalem during that time. <laughs> Something happened here between uh, King David, whom we have no archaeological evidence for, because Travis says he's in Egypt as the pharaohs of Egypt during the 18th dynasty, and when the exodus occurred. Uh, space of time after Joshua, Jesus, the book of Jesus, lets the men to the promised land crossing the Nile or the Jordan River. I did the video. Elijah. Elisha. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me at all. And if you've seen 1984, the church would love that. And they're doing it. You know, this coronavirus was a godsend to help promote 1984's tactics on the church because the prophets never have to go out in public anymore if Zion is now Utah and the 
gathering has occurred. There's no need to go traveling around the world, visiting the saints. Hey, here we are. You're going to go to church and pay your tithing, right? Good. And so, uh, yeah, they, they can just hide out at Temple Square, get apartment buildings right there, and uh, have their meetings. Okay, well, what is Statue Jesus going to be telling the Mormons today? And yeah, you'll, you'll get, uh, with Hollywood magic, you can have any guy pretending to be Jesus and just have him read a whole bunch of scripts. Uh, all sorts of different words and then you just get a splicer to cut and paste them all into different texts and so you can be eternal and just get somebody to press record like the Wizard of Oz and uh, Mormons will see it on their screen because nobody will be allowed to enter into his presence because he's too holy for mere mortal scum and uh, yeah I can see that happening and so the statue will then be placed in a key location to get Mormons all weepy oh he's back I knew it was true all this time yeah the big con Mormons will continue to pay their money if you survive because if you hadn't noticed they're trying to exterminate you if you don't leave this is the exodus. They're forcing us to leave. <laughs> it's not like Pharaoh who said, no, you have to stay. You cannot leave. <laughs> nope. These guys want us gone. And so, yeah, they're torturing us. Polluting the air, polluting the land, polluting the water. <laughs> the drought. Lead poisoning. And uh, no snow anymore, so skiing's worthless. We used to be greatest snow on earth. Now we're the lone and dreary wilderness. <laughs> I wonder what they'll do for that, if they'll keep that. <laughs> probably not. They'll probably make it so that uh, it's just the one room, and you stay in that one room until it's time to go to the Vale, and then people will file up in their turn to go through the veil. That's what I'm betting. Because they're, they've said that they're taking pictures of all the murals and then destroyed, gone. <clears throat> so yeah, that tells me that that's what they're going to be doing, is like what they do with the other temples. So that they can have video recorders and all of them, projectors. And they'll it wouldn't surprise me if we get new Adam and Eve videos. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if all of a sudden Adam has multiple Eves. <laughs> and they'll placate women with the various Eves having different speaking roles. Oh, red-headed Eve is about to speak. And of course it's in the temple now, and so this is sacred and holy place. We don't talk about what goes on in the temple, so yeah, they can be nude again, just like Brigham Young had them. And uh, if you didn't know that, there's also, uh, what was her name? She was uh, a woman who pretended to have magical healing powers. Zafra, Zafra, Zephronia, Zephaniah, whatever. Uh, she was sealed to the deceased Joseph Smith, and she was told to say that Joseph had approached her during his lifetime. Uh, and we got Thinker of Thoughts and others who fell for it, thinking that, oh, yeah, she really did, because she said it in her journal decades later in Salt Lake. Uh, but yeah, she was she was anointing and washing people before her blessings. Now, how was that done in the temples? Oh, you don't know? You're not old enough to know? Your grandparents didn't tell you? 
yeah, they used to be naked. And then the shield came along. That's when I first learned about all of this, was with the shield. You know, it was just like a poncho, all white, of course. And, uh, and that was it. And it had the open sides so that the officiator, the temple worker, can stick his hand down in. <laughs> Oops! And then uh, they changed eventually in the 2000s uh, to uh, have us wear the magic underwear so that we're not naked. <laughs> and then, uh, not uh, 2014, I think it was, or I can't remember when, they then changed it so that you're now clothed. You can be in regular slacks and your white shirt. You don't have to be in all whites, so you're not naked, you're not in the robes or anything like that. Or the poncho. So yeah, it was originally naked. And so here she is, doing these washings and anointings and then blessings, as Brigham Young and the Twelve are watching. The people who are talking about this are just not understanding what that means. It means Brigham Young and the Twelve are watching her wash and anoint women. Naked. Naked. And so that confirmed my fear that what are now used as the air unit vents were not supposed to be air unit vents. <laughs> yeah, worst case scenario. They were specifically intended for Brigham Young and his 12 to be observing the sessions where Adam and his Eves, specifically, were naked. Yeah. Brigham Young is also a, not just a sexual deviant, he's a legitimate pervert. And so, yeah, I'm the one who breaks that story for you. Because nobody else is doing the research. So, yeah. You're going to have the apostles and prophets who will now be observing everything. Wouldn't surprise me if they've got cameras set up. But of course, no live sessions anymore. So, won't have to worry about nudity per se, except in the baptistry, locker room, showers. And, uh, uh yeah. There shouldn't be any other reason to get naked in the temple anymore. So, yeah, little underage kids then. Hmm. Alright, so, yeah, that's the breaking news. Uh, they've designated the places for the temples. But, uh, you watch. If for some reason God does not smite down everybody like he's supposed to this year before September 7th, that's what they're planning. Mark my word, if they have not forced you out of Utah, if you are among the few to stick around and be among the strong to survive, like Korahor, <coughs> that's exactly what they're planning just like in 1984. And not too dissimilar from Fahrenheit 451, but slight difference. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, before conference, that was a breakout video, thanks to the prophets, <laughs> that YouTube could not stop. It got too out of hand. <laughs> the church is planning to abolish the Book of Mormon abolish the whole story of Joseph Smith. They're going to create a whole new narrative, probably just have it as name. Ah, oh, yeah, Joseph Smith, he saw God and, and Jesus Christ, and they said, start my church, and he did, and here we are today. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Book of Mormon, gone. 
causes too many controversies. All those scientists. <laughs> and Travis, how did he know that it was coded to reveal our evil plot? Oh my goodness. So, I mean, this is a definitely a movie material. The whole thing. You know, a trilogy movie. You know, first Joseph Smith and the origin story, and then you have Brigham Young with the assassination story, unless you combine it with the movie version. And then you have uh, leading up to, maybe you'd have to do it into a pentology or something. <laughs> and then uh, the uh, collapse of the church under the Edmunds Tucker Act, and then the reestablishment in 1923, and changing it to evangelical Mormonism and then uh, that's why you're believing that we're supposed to be Christian it's because in 1923 guys you're not doing your research and then uh, yeah leading into the latter days as they are denying that we're in the second coming but they've got it all prepared <laughs> Oh, yeah, by the way, we, we had the second coming. Here he is. Oh, hey, Jesus. How is it uh, in the celestial kingdom in the Holy of Holies? We had to use a filter over the camera so that we can see your glory. <laughs> can somebody get me a beer, please? <laughs> what? All right, the word of wisdom is now gone because you got to get rid of all things Joseph Smith. <laughs> we just have section 132. That's it. <laughs> oh dear God, too many fun times.